Welcome folks, uh, my name is Glenn Gartner and I quickly want to cover um, the workflow I use to create uh, these assets for this Unreal Engine 4 level. It's a concept level, all mechanical pieces, um, an engine room type theme. Everything here was a low poly asset, modeled and remained low poly. No high poly work done, no um, image, uh, no normal map baking or AO maps of any kind. Um, all normal work was done with Endu, 3D Coat, or Substance Designer. Um, material ID maps were created in Photoshop or uh, those other applications, Photoshop, um, sorry, Substance Designer or 3D Coat. And the layered materials were created with Substance Designer and exported um, directly into Unreal Engine 4. So quickly, I'm going to uh, cover the workflow that I used. For those of you that are experienced and don't really want to spend a lot of time uh, watching tutorials um, or my process. Um, I'll try to cover in five minutes or less um, the um, the process I used. Um, I'll fly through it quickly and for those of you that want more time that are beginning um, or have more questions you can watch the remainder of the videos and uh, see what it is that, that I have to offer. Okay, here we go. So let's kick this off. Here's the overview. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's a, um, it's a texture workflow for Unreal Engine 4. And in this case, I'm going to cover um, how I used Endu and Substance Designer 4 to create the textures, th which I then imported into the, um, into the engine. I, I'm not going to cover, cover any modeling here. Uh, they're all just low poly assets. Um, the ones I begin using have already been UV unwrapped. And we jump directly into Photoshop and Endu. Um, as I mentioned before, I've also I also used 3D Coat as well as Substance Designer to generate normal map details uh, right off the bat. Um, but I used Endu the most. They create some fantastic normal maps, um, and Substance Designer has a uh, a wonderful layered material workflow that you can use for um, batch um, asset processing, which I'll describe later. So uh, I used all low poly. Uh, assets. I didn't create any high poly meshes in ZBrush or a 3D model, 3D modeling application, and there was no uh, normal map baking or AO baking of any kind. Um, that was intentional. Uh, I wanted to see um, what the uh, what kind of results I could produce um, on a uh, a level wide scale, and I was pleased with the results. So normal map painting was done with Endu, which is a Photoshop 4 plugin. Endu is a program developed by Quixel. Um, uh, they currently have a beta program right now for their latest version on their website. Um, the material ID maps um, were u uh, created in Photoshop using the texture information that uh, we created from Endu. I'll quickly cover that process. And then the material ID maps and the normal maps were imported into Substance Designer with the low poly mesh. Um, any additional maps that I required to drive substance effects like edge wear or dirt or grime, um, I was able to bake within Substance Designer, like AO maps, uh, position maps, world space normals, um, and then I created a, uh, I composited my layered material uh, for, um, as a main graph for my entire level, and then I could pipe in each unique low poly asset with its unique normal maps to create um, a common theme and feel and look across the entire level um, very quickly, um, procedurally generating this uh, these maps. And finally I imported the texture maps into Unreal Engine 4. Um, I used the texture export option in Substance Designer. I didn't actually use the Substance plugin, um, but that is available for those that want to use it. Okay, so let's jump into Endu and um, I'll take you through the process quickly. So we kick off the texturing process um, uh, by first creating the normal map. Um, which we'll use to generate uh, other maps and information down the line. So it, it's the first one we should begin with. And in Endu, um, with the latest version, and if you have Photoshop CS6 or later, I believe, um, you can use a multi-material uh, uh, workflow um, to create um, what they call here your uh, multi-normal uh, workflow, I should say, to quickly generate um, normal details using uh, shapes, um, vector shapes in Photoshop and you can uh, you can drive the process pretty quick so let me activate my UV island overlay and here we have the front of our asset which uh, with no normal information on it yet 
Um, so in in Endo you can uh, and Photoshop you can quickly draw uh, smart objects and use them to um, to drive normal maps. And you can use subtraction, um, uh, addition processes to uh, to drive the whole uh, drive all the features. So let's see. So we kick off the process by uh, creating our first normal shape. Let's change the direction of this normal here by adjusting the slant to down. We can quickly change the shape of this object. By, um, by tweaking the, the smart vector shape that we have here. So say we want to select these nodes, tweak them, move them to our heart's content, and we can adjust the, um, the normal map in real time within uh, 3D. And the beauty of this process is uh, it's fairly non-destructive, so you can add all the details and shapes you want by, um, if you're smart with uh, Photoshop and you know a thing or two about how to add and subtract shapes, you can create a myriad of designs and effects uh, using hard surface or organic options, uh, but in this case shapes use um, are, are excellent for hard surface work. And you can subtract and add all the details you want and, um, and tweak your model. Let's refresh that once in 3D. You get the idea what we're going for here. Okay. So after this process, um, I'm, I'm going to show you a completed normal map that I then take over um, into, um, into another new Photoshop document where I use this normal information to create some material ID maps. Okay, here I have a new Photoshop document open alongside the normal map that I created um, previously. Here's the normal map on the 3D model in our 3D viewport. And I can use the normal map information from uh, this document to create material IDs around the normal information I already generated. Um, let me quickly um, flip this normal map for you in Endu. I have the normal directions changed from a previous tutorial. There we go. So using the, um, the, the layer information created um, within Endu in, 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 in with the zipped uh, layers option, you can control left click on all the normal details that you've drawn, control copy, go over to your material IDs uh, document and paste in place in Photoshop and you can create items that you can select and you can paint your material ID maps over top. For example, I can take the uh, the base color layer here in my material ID, select a generic gunmetal gray. This is just a color that I'm going to use to separate the materials in Substance Designer. I'm going to call this layer gunmetal create a new layer above it called steel and then I'm going to use the information that I just copied over and fill that information with another color that I'm going to use to uh, create my steel and you can copy that information back over from um, from your normal document by simply selecting these layers from the, inf uh, from the pixel information that you've already created to save yourself from some time pick one with more substance here. Something more meaty. That'll work. Paste in place. 
and again let's fill that layer with something like this and you can view this information so to get an idea of your material separation um, within 3do you can load your custom map here as an albedo and when you get further down the line and you've added more um, division between materials you can get a feel for uh, what this may look like in your final layered uh, material so here I have the final material ID uh, that I created um, again just um, copying the the layer information from my normal map over here into uh, different layers here that I've hidden but I can quickly use them by control left clicking and I can highlight the contents of those layers and paint within them so my material IDs line up precisely with my um, with my normal information so you can see here where I have in 3D where I have this steel plate where I created this normal map um, I will have a steel uh, plate uh, separated from the gun metal and the painted metal and the rubber hose here um, based on the normal information I, I first created, right? And so for other assets that aren't necessarily um, uh, depicted on the normal map, like these pipes, you can simply uh, import your UV overlay that you uh, from your 3D application, and you can find your assets here that where you want them to be completely one material. And for these pipes, for example, I just painted with uh, Marquee Select Tool uh, the color that I want to use for steel. And um, the beauty about the uh, workflow process with something like Substance Designer is if you want to change any of these material IDs after the fact, you can quickly edit the document, save them, and a program like Substance Designer will automatically update um, your layered materials based on the new information. So with that said, we will close Photoshop and Endo, and we will take the normal map the low poly mesh and the material ID map into Substance Designer where we'll um, plug it into our master substance graph. So here's our master graph in Substance Designer 4 um, which we will go over um, in the, the lengthy tutorial following this one but essentially what we've done is we've imported our low poly mesh here which I've selected imported it into the 3D view we have our normal map which we created in Endo in Photoshop which we imported into our graph here our material ID map here which will drive the um, material layered material functions within Substance Designer using a um, multi-material blend node and at the beginning of that process quickly we have um, a, our base gunmetal which will overlay the entire object and then on top of that we have our steel our painted metal and our rubber and these um, materials are applied based on this color information and we tell this uh, master node um, which color represents which material and after that we have a uh, perfectly clean object for example we can view in the 3D view um, we have a, a nicely polished um, piece of machinery here but not quite realistic so after that we want to add um, all kinds of surface effects whether it's edge wear, grime, dirt, dust, rust um, the myriad of effects that you can uh, create very quickly um, with uh, Substance Designer um, from the nodes that they provide. Okay. Uh, additionally, we have other maps which drive these processes. Uh, for example, a, um, a curvature map and an ambient inclusion map, which you can bake directly within Substance Designer by right-clicking on your mesh item here, um, selecting Bake Model Information, and you have um, a slew of, of options that, that I've used for this tutorial as well as more there that you can bake within the program it's very handy and those maps will drive other processes like a surface brush here or an edge damage brush here which will create masks that you can then use to modulate the color information so say for a scratch surface you want to increase the roughness just in areas on edges where the object may be scratched um, maybe change the diffuse color a little bit you can do that quickly uh, you can do the same with adding um, rust and dust um, from the ground up um, using position maps and world space normals and you plug all that in into your master nodes here at the very end um, these output nodes here are primarily in the case um, where we're exporting to Unreal Engine 4 we just use these output nodes to view um, the workflow 
within our 3D um, viewport here. For Unreal Engine, what we uh, want to do, if we're just if we're going to export these textures as images to import them manually into uh, Unreal Engine, we will combine the um, the RGB diffuse and uh, the 8-bit grayscale metalness or roughness into a single image to save texture space and to import them into Unreal Engine. So in our case, we took the diffuse color and the roughness um, black and white value and then combine them into one image. So diffuse is RGB and the alpha is roughness. And then for the normal map, the RGB channel and the metalness map, which is an 8-bit black and white image, we um, added it to the alpha and then combined it into one RGBA image uh, for each. And then we simply export this, um, these textures, export as bitmaps. We select just the two we want for the engine and select save all and then we go over to Unreal Engine 4. And to conclude it all, we import the uh, low poly mesh item into the engine and then we uh, import our layered materials from Substance Designer. So in this case our diffuse um, and our roughness maps and then our normal and metal maps uh, create a material here in Unreal Engine and very simply connect the two nodes, so our diffuse color into the base color, our roughness map, which we stored in the alpha into the roughness value, our normal map into the normal slot, and then our metallic map we stored in our alpha into the metallic slot here. We will save the, um, save the material, apply it to our mesh, and there we have it. A completed low poly asset um, no high poly work performed, all layered materials um, and normal maps done in 2D, imported directly into Unreal Engine, as well as all these other assets. So if you want more details on the process, uh, feel free to follow along. Um, I'll, go through, uh, I'll go through the process uh, much slower than I just did, explaining a few more details about Endu, the Substance Designer, Material ID Maps, and um, very briefly, the import process into Unreal Engine 4.